dying to know, because you said this before we started recording, that you hate parents. Walk me through that. <laughs> <laughs> parents are the worst, am I right? Uh, I, the, yeah, that was a issue when I like first started practicing as a therapist, um, as a therapist, you know, you, you, you have what is called like, so there's like transference and then there's counter transference and transference is sort of like the, the shit that the clients project onto you. So maybe they're just like, they see you as like professorial, they see you as like the wise person, or they see you as like kind of like boyfriend energy or parent energy or something. Um, they just you, you, there's always transference and there's counter transference which is like how the therapist sees the client and how they might be reacting to that client and when i see when i had like these parents coming in for family therapy and did a lot of like child psychology and therapy and taught parenting classes i would see my own parents and i didn't like resolve all my anger and frustration that i have with my parents and I, you know, there's sort of like this teenager inside of me that's just like, why didn't, why weren't you better fucking parents? Why didn't you just step the fuck up, you know? And then Seriously. I would have, yeah. And then I would have these feelings with the parents that came in where I'd be like, why aren't you spending time with your kids? Why aren't you fucking playing with them? Like you are the one that I should be talking to, not your fucking kids right. who are responding normally to you. Right. Um, so I, but like. You should. It's best if you're a therapist and you have empathy for your clients. Um, but I was having a hard not time. Anger. <laughs> not anger. Not like I want to punch <laughs> in the fucking face. Uh, so I, again, w which is sort of like my thing is like, oh, there's like a lot to resolve here. So I'm just going to not deal with it. And I don't want to see parents right now. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to my, I'm going to go do my own therapy. I'm going to talk to my own supervisor. I think this is going to be somewhat of a journey so I can like find empathy for my parents. And so then I started focusing on a different type of client in my private practice. That's so fascinating because I saw that, I saw this meme a long time ago that is kind of like this, where it's like we're in therapy because our parents refuse to go to therapy, and mm -hmm. it's like it's like this this whole thing where there's it is such a journey. I've been on it myself too, where I'm, I tell myself my parents did the best they could with the tools they had, and they made sure that we were fed and that we educated and that we you know the base base level we had places to live even when times were tough. So. It is a journey and mm -hmm. I'm curious how long it took you or if you're still on it maybe and, and how, Oh God, I'm how so your far relationship. away from it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I, I like that line that I've said to my clients a lot where your parents did the best they could with like the tools or the information they had and you deserve better. Like even right. so, even though they did their best, um, and so I try to kind of like internalize that on my own too. It's, it's hard to do. And I think I like go through stages or phases in my life where I do actually feel a lot more compassion and empathy for my parents. And I see them as like flawed human beings that tried their best. The problem is there's a part of me that's just like, you didn't fucking try your best. <laughs> and, and you actually had a lot of tools that you did not fucking use uh so uh so like i'm still working on that um and you know what like there's also like i was just maybe like six months ago or something i've had a therapist this this current therapist for like a two three years and she okay. was like man, your mom, you're so angry at your mom. I was like, oh my God, I know she's the worst. Right. And she's like, do you want, <laughs> do you want to work through this? And I was like, badly, I want to work through this because it's like affecting other parts of my life that I don't like, you know, getting in the way of mm. my relationships and shit like that. And so she was like, let's try EMDR. And I was like, EMDR is great. It's so trendy. Everybody loves EMDR. Just a handful of sessions. You're cured. Cure me. You're done. Best. Yeah. Like, uh, and so she was like, let's do it. We start doing EMDR. And every time we do EMDR, I'm basically sabotaging it. I'm like, not in the mood. I think her stupid, the stupid thing I have to follow on the screen is distracting. It's not working. Like, and, and so after five sessions, she was like, you don't want to do this. You're not allowing me to like do therapy on you. And I was like, I'm not. So let's stop. <laughs> <laughs> I I would rather like sit in my anger and be angry at my mom than like move through the healing. So apparently I'm not quite ready for it. So that's where I am. Well, and 
I'm sure you know this better than me, but you have to be ready for therapy for it to work or at least yes. get started. It, I was actually with my therapist last night. I was telling her um, about my first experience in therapy, which was at a um, like a government community center kind of thing. They they you know, you pay based on what you make and what you can afford and stuff. And I just like wasn't ready for it. I was like 21, 22. And I was just like, not ready for it. I just mm -hmm. I wanted a magic pill. Right. And it's right. And so I, I lasted maybe three months. But um, even when I started up again in probably like six years ago now, I wasn't ready. It took me a little while to like warm up to it. So it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's sometimes it's easier to stay in the anger. But where are you at now? Are you still in the anger? Oh my God, it's so fun in the anger. Join me in the anger. <laughs> I'm in the anger and I'm, but you know, like I'm aware of it. I understand how it's affecting me in negative and sometimes positive ways. Um, and, and that's the thing is like, you know, what if I am in the anger and I'm in the anger for the rest of my life? That's okay. I make, I'm, I'm like, I'm Peace. making a choice. Yeah. And I like that I have some mindfulness around it. And I think that it's a little childish and mm -hmm. um, it would probably be best if I let it go. But you know, the like, I'm trying to think of a good metaphor here. Like this is a, maybe a problematic metaphor, but I think you'll get it. So, you know, like, Donuts taste great. We love a donut, right? And I wish I could eat donuts for every meal. That's how much I love a donut. Mm -hmm. But I know that if I ate a donut, my body would get a lot bigger and I'd feel uncomfortable in my clothes and I wouldn't feel super good about myself. Um, right. So I'm not going to eat a donut every single meal. It's just going to be like a special treat for me every now and then. Um, so it's sort of similar in that, like, what would it take for me to be like, you know what, the effects of dropping my anger and losing it would give me like this, this longer term benefit, like, you know, not eating donuts all the time would give me this longer term benefit of feeling better in my body. I haven't figured out what that longer term benefit would be. I still love being angry slash eating emotional donuts. And that's where I am. Mm -hmm. right now. And it, it sort of feels like that's what therapy is about. A lot of times is like, I'm trying to convince my clients to stop eating these emotional donuts. And if they're like, actually, these are incredibly tasty and really fun and dramatic and passionate. And, and I, and I enjoy doing that. Then you enjoy do that. I'm going to like point out how it's not really serving you but I'm not going to force you to stop eating them. And my therapist can't force me to stop eating these angry donuts <laughs> that lead to like frustration with my mom. You know what I mean? Have I lost I you totally this do. metaphor? Okay, no. You you okay. Well, first of all, I love donuts and I used to eat a dozen on my birthday every, which is disgusting to think yeah, about that's a now. Lot of donuts, yeah. but, but they were, to be fair, they were Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts aren't like that big. And But anyway, I'm not going to justify that that savage side it's of your myself. birthday but it's okay yeah <laughs> but man I, I love donuts and i have those things too where i'm like you know what i'm just gonna feel this way about this right now and i'm okay with that at least i'm aware mm -hmm. mm -hmm. kind of like yeah. stages of grief you know you go back and forth exactly yeah yeah so, i'm dying to know one last question about your your mom what's your relationship like with her um, well, she is also a therapist, um, which I'm sure has see something, that coming. yeah, uh -huh. uh, which I'm sure has something to do with like me becoming a therapist. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that like one of the reasons I became a therapist was to like get more connected with my mom. Cause I always felt like we didn't have much in common we didn't feel really connected and me becoming a therapist. I wasn't conscious of it at the time, but I think mm -hmm. subconsciously I was like, how do I connect with this woman? I, I, there was always a feeling of like, I miss her. This woman, <laughs> this woman. She really felt like uh, this woman in my life, uh, it, which was like so weird. Cause like sh I saw her relating to my older sister so easily my mom and my sister are the same person basically and so i was like i'm not like my sister and i'm not like my mom and my mom has 
plenty of times told me like I had a difficult time connecting with you. I didn't know how to do it. Um, so she also, she struggled. And so I was like creating this bridge by becoming a therapist. Um, it backfired on me because oh, no. uh, it, 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 when you become a therapist, oftentimes you become a lot more emotionally intelligent and have a better understanding of your feelings and how your past has affected your personality and your relationships. And, and then I like had all these new words for the, this is how you hurt me, mom. Um, which, which, you know, She'd have to be ready to hear that too. <laughs> yeah. And, and when you, I, I'm not a parent, but uh, I do know that like one of the worst shames you could feel in life is parental shame. Like this is a, this is a, a true, true thing. And so when I went to my mom and I was like, Hey, this is why I'm angry. This is how you let me down. This is how I was hurt by you. Her shame hijacked her and continues to hijack her. And she can't have that conversation. Um, so we've been trying to have that conversation since I, you know, went to grad school over 20 years ago. And, uh, eventually during the pandemic it came to a head and i was like i can't keep on talking to you about this right now and in fact the only way that i'm going to continue talking to you and be in a relationship with you is if you go to family therapy with me um and and she said no so uh why so that's it's been a two years a little over two years and we haven't talked since oh my gosh well i'm sorry yeah. to hear that that's terrible did she say why I mean, or is it just you the should shame? have her on a podcast, and I want to listen to it. Uh, the, oh. the, <laughs> the problem is, is like, if you are hijacked by shame, oftentimes you're not like, I'm hijacked by shame right now, and it's hard to get in touch. Typically, you're like, stop doing this to me. You're the asshole. What the fuck is wrong with mm -hmm. you? So she has a story of like, I'm asking too much from her. I complain too much or something like that. Um, I see. So she's so, so no, we were, we're, we're very, we don't share the same reality, which is a problem. And that's why we want, I want to go to like family therapy. Uh, I'm, 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 I don't want to shit all over my mom. She's a good person. I think she's the worst. Um, but if you ask my, <laughs> if you ask my sister what she thinks of her, you'll hear, you'll hear glowing reviews. Um, so I just have the whole family on. I think I this think could be fun. <laughs> you need to. Yeah. You're missing very important parts, very important like stories here from other people. But the, she is a therapist that's never gone to therapy. And that is a very unique kind of person that most therapists, the vast majority of therapists go to therapy. Um, you're kind so of you're, supposed to have one, aren't you? Like, isn't that like part of the, now it's like mandated, but when yeah, she like was, code of ethics. She, yeah. Yeah. Um, but she, she doesn't do it. So uh, anyways, we, we haven't talked in a couple of years. If we ever do, I'll come back on the show and I'll tell you all about it. 